Hello, I'm Michelle and welcome to Somewhere in Bookland. This year I've decided to do my reading wrap-ups a little bit differently as my reading varies so much from month to month. Take last year for example. One month I read 12 books and another month I barely managed to squeak out three. So from now on I will be doing a wrap-up for every five books that I read which I think will allow me to go into a little more detail about what the books are and how I felt about the books without feeling like my video is going to be forever long like hours long is how I feel it normally is about to be and then I have to cut so much down and I just feel like this will be a lot better. I will also be doing readathon wrap-ups separately and I won't be including those in my five book wrap-ups. So for example if I read these five books and then I read maybe one or two other books did a readathon and I read four books during the readathon, I would wrap up the five books, the four books during the readathon, and then the other two books with the next three books after the readathon. So it might not be exactly in order, or I might do the five books, then the two books together, and then the readathon separately. And so some of them might be less than five books, but it's gonna work out. It'll be fine. And some of them might be more for the readathon, but like I said, it will be fine. Now, if it's like a month long readathon, and all the books I read that month were for the readathon, then I might not do it that way. But it, it'll be fine. So, like, if it's a month long readathon and half the books I read were for the readathon, I'd wrap up the readathon books and then the other books separately. It'll be fine. So the books, when I label them books one through five, seven through, when I label them books one through five, six through ten, eleven through fifteen, whatever, it might not be in the order that I read them, but they will all get wrapped up. Wrapped up. It, it'll work out. We'll, we'll see how it works, but it'll work out. I also do plan on still doing a monthly wrap up type video because I love seeing everything for the month put together but during those wrap-ups it'll be more stats wrap-ups instead of wrap-up wrap-ups. Since I've already went over my feelings on the book I'm not going to go into my feelings on the book in the monthly stats wrap-up. Instead I'll just be saying different stats about my reading that month. I'll list all the books that I read that month, I'll list my average ratings, my ratings for all the books in general, which genres I tended to read more that month and stuff like that. It'll kind of be like the stats videos that you do at the end of the year except I'll do one for each month and go into like how long I actually spent reading and I think that'll be really cool. I'm hoping it'll be really cool. I think it'll be interesting so we'll see. We'll see. So those monthly stats videos shouldn't be too long because I'm not going to be going into a lot of detail but I think it'll be something fun for me because I love watching stats videos so it's going to be something I enjoy. So long story short this video is going to be wrapping up the first five books I read this year 2019 slash the first five books I read in January. Now I know I said wrapping up five books at a time instead of a whole bunch more possibly was going to help me go into better detail about the book, what it was about and my feelings on it. But for these first two at least I'm not exactly sure how much detail I'm going to be able to go into. They are both like series enders type books and I don't want to spoil too much. So the first book I finished so far this year was Winter by Marissa Meyer. This book is the fourth book in the Lunar Chronicles and honestly I felt like it wrapped things up pretty nicely. I had started this book in December and it only gotten about halfway before the year was over so technically I only read half of this book this year but you know I'm gonna count the whole thing and that's okay. This book is a little different than the rest in the series as this book takes place almost solely on Luna instead of splitting its time between Earth, Luna, and space. I felt like that added a nice aspect to the story as it was the first time we were really getting to see a lot of Luna and it really let us see just what Cinder was fighting for. This book also adds a couple more perspectives into the mix which means we're following a lot of people throughout this book and they keep coming together, splitting apart, 
new groups come together and it's a lot to keep track of. Also so many different things were happening at the same time and like I said before that was a lot to keep track of. Also while so many things were happening there were certain points in this book where it started to get a little slow and it felt like the characters were just at a standstill. This book was also really long like 827 pages long and I'm not quite sure it needed to be that long. Everything in this book was building up to this huge climax and then when it finally got to it I felt like it just ended a little bit abruptly. I really want more in this world and I'm excited that I still have wi the Wires and Nerves graphic novel and the Ferris novella to read. Overall I gave this book four stars. Now the second book I finished this year was Stars Above by Marissa Meyer, which is a bind up of novellas in the Lunar Chronicles world. I had read most of this novella bind up in December actually as I was reading them as they came and so the only novella I had left to read in January that I finished was the last novella number 4.5 as I had to wait to read that one until after I finished winter otherwise I would have spoiled myself for some of the things in the book. Overall I gave this bind up three stars as I really didn't feel many of the stories actually added anything to the series as a whole. So I'm just gonna go over a couple of the novellas and my feelings toward them. Glitches. Now I'm not sure if I'm missing something here but I honestly didn't really see how this was related to the story at all. Except as a cute little tell that can kind of make me relate to Cinder's android friend. I think her name was Aoki but I'm not exactly sure. But yes other than like how that could relate to what she was going through I don't see how this really added anything to the story. Also the novella The Little Android was sad don't see what it added to the story. Didn't really tell me anything that I didn't already know. Maybe it's because I had already read Cinder and that one was supposed to come before Cinder so I didn't really read it in the order that maybe I should have. I'm not sure but yes it didn't really add much for me. My favorite novella in this bind up was The Queen's Army as I feel you got to really see more of Wolf's story and I felt like this story finally added something that I wasn't getting to see in the other books. Also the novella Something Old Something New was super super cheesy but I did love seeing the characters one last time and loved that they got a little bit more closure than they did at the end of winter. Now the third book I finished in 2019 was Noteworthy by Riley Redgate and I thoroughly enjoyed this book. This is the first book of the year that I actually both started and finished in 2019 and thus it was the first book that I actually started timing how long it took me to read because I used to do this I had started doing it last year and then I just kind of stopped and so for this year I would like to time how long it takes me to read books um, starting with the books that I started in 2019 and finish in 2019. I still have a lot of books left in 2018 that I still haven't finished that I started in 2018 then I'm not gonna be able to time but this is the first one that I was able to time. So this book took me three and a half hours to read and I rated it four stars. This book also made me cry which is just a little fun fact. This book follows Jordan who is in her junior year at the prestigious Kensington Blaine Boarding School for the Performing Arts and she is attending the school as a member of the theater department. Jordan has a rather unique voice for a girl she is an alto too and this year is the year that she hopes she will finally be cast into the musical. She really doesn't care which part she just wants a part but alas she is not and her parents are not happy with the fact that in the three years she has been there she has not been cast in anything and while Jordan is there on a scholarship all the extra expenses that accrue while she is there are a burden that Jordan is unsure of how long her parents can take on. Then Jordan sees an opening for the Sharpshooters, an all-male a cappella group at her school. And in them she sees her chance to succeed and prove herself worthy at the school. The catch? They are an all-male a cappella group. She is a female. So she disguises herself as Mel and joins their ranks. I really enjoyed this book. Going into it I didn't know that Jordan was bisexual or Asian American but she is and I feel like that is important to note for other people who want to read the book because you need to 
you should know that going in. She's bisexual and Asian American. This book reminded me of She's the Man so much except instead of soccer there was singing and I love She's the Man so I just knew I was going to like this book. I love the main character Jordan. I also love the fact that while she's disguising herself as a man she does have some qualms about what she's doing. Not just because she's lying to everyone and feels like she's deceiving them but also because she's questioning about what she's doing and whether or not that's stepping in somebody else's lane. As she doesn't identify as trans but she's worried that by cross-dressing she is trying to take their identity in a way. I also love the friendships that Jordan develops throughout this book and you can really see how much they mean to her as the book goes on. Especially after she somehow managed to make it through the first two years of school there without really cultivating any friendships. And so these friendships really change her. I will admit I did look up videos of the different ranges of voices they were talking about as I wanted to paint a more accurate picture in my head and I think it helped me a lot. But I mean you could probably just assume she has a lower voice. The fourth thing I read so far this year was The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Volume 1, The Crucible by Roberto Aguirre Skaska. Now I read this book as I really enjoyed the Netflix adaptation of it and I wanted to see where it got its. I gave this graphic novel three stars and it took me 51 minutes to get through. I just wasn't the biggest fan of this graphic novel and like going into it I thought I would like it a lot more than I did so it was kind of disappointing. While I understand why the art style was the way it was, I mean after all it did create a creepy aspect to the book, but honestly I just didn't like the art style. It actually, it actually made it very difficult for me to get into this book. Ignoring the art for a bit, the story itself was nice and dark, which I liked and which I had wanted going into it, the dark creepy vibes, and that is why I'm giving this graphic novel three stars instead of lower because I liked the story. And rating wise I can't exactly ignore the art style as it is a graphic novel and art style in a graphic novel makes up a good part of the story. Honestly I'm not sure if I'm going to continue on with the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina's graphic novels and I think I might just stick to the TV show. The fifth book that I read in 2019 was yet another graphic novel and that was, check please, Hashtag Hawk Volume 1 by Negozi Akuzu. Now this graphic novel took me about an hour and 10 minutes to read and I gave it a four star. This graphic novel is really cute and it's an LGBT book as the main character that it follows, Eric Biddle, is in fact gay. Now Eric Biddle is a former figure skating champion turned hockey player who is afraid of being checked. He's also a vlogger and a baker and overall pretty awesome character. This graphic novel follows his first two years at Samwell University and his first two years playing hockey for them. It also follows his friendship with all the members on the team including Jack, his captain, who wasn't exactly his biggest fan at first. Now I read this book through my library but I would like to buy a copy of it for myself as well as a copy of volume two which is supposed to come out sometime this year. Eric, otherwise known as Biddy is such a fun lovable character and I just love the friendships that he makes with the guys on his team. He is so much smaller than the other guys on his team and I feel like they just adopt him into the family like a little, like a little mascot. They just adopt him in. I mean his baking for them probably helped because they're like mmm pass yes. I also love the fact that he's a vlogger and so sometimes he's talking straight to you the reader like you were watching his vlog. He's talking to you like you're watching his vlog. The artwork was really cute and the dialogue was fun and I'm not much of a sports person but honestly that didn't even really matter much. You can read this graphic novel without really knowing anything about hockey and still enjoy it. So those were my first five books that I read this year and honestly I'm not sure if this wrap up is any shorter than my normal wrap ups would have been but I do like it as I feel I have more time to go into detail without feeling like I'm going into too much detail and not gonna have room for the other books. But we shall see. If I like it after this year I'll stick to the format and maybe make a little changes if necessary as we go along. But before I get ahead of myself we're only one wrap up in. We have a ways to go. I'll probably make changes this year as we go along too. We'll, we'll see how it goes. What was your first read of the year? And was it one you had actually started in 2019? Or 
was it like me where you had started it in 2018 and then it kind of rolled over into this year? Comment down below and let me know. I like the concept of starting fresh each year and like finishing 2018 and then starting 2019 fresh, but I'm not very good at that. Anyways, click the thumbs up if you like this video. Click subscribe down below if you want to see more of this face in your feed and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!